Colorado High School Activities Association Baseball is on 1010KSIR and on the World Wide Web at KSIR.com this afternoon from Resurrection Christian High School in Loveland. The Brush B Diggers take on the Resurrection Christian Cougars in a non-league clash, the second consecutive non-league game. The B Diggers will be playing against a team from Class 2A. I'm John Beltran as the B Diggers are 4-1 and one going into this game after beating Yuma on Saturday in 10 innings, 5-4. Resurrection at one and two, but uh, don't be fooled by the record. This team is a state contender every year, and their two losses were to Paonia, eleven to ten and three to two. And Paonia has destroyed their other six opponents, and is eight and zero oh on the season. The Bee Diggers wearing their visiting maroons. Well, actually, that's going to be their visiting and home uniform for the entire season. Loveland uh, Resurrection Christian here in Loveland wearing their home whites. And let's get to the B Digger starting lineup. It's brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Proud to be Northeast Colorado's locally owned hometown savings and loan with locations in Fort Morgan, Sterling, and Brush. Available 24-7 for your banking needs. Equitable Savings and Loan. Batting first is the catcher, Matt Coe. Second baseman, Jaron Peterson at second. Arnoldo Matos Garcia, who hit a two-run homer against Yuma, is the shortstop batting third. The cleanup hitter is the pitcher, B.J. Hirschfeld. First baseman, Aaron Williams, at fifth. Trent Mount, the third baseman, bat sixth. Batting seventh, the right fielder, Ryan Fergus. Noah Reed is back in the lineup. The left fielder hits eighth. And batting ninth is the center fielder, Justin Griffith. Resurrection yet to take the field. We'll set the defense here momentarily, but the way this series is gone... It's amazing. It's very consistent. When they play the game in brush, the bee diggers seem to rally to win a, a nail biter, but the games here in Loveland have been one sided. All the way going back to the two thousand two, two thousand four seasons and Resurrection normally wins these games handily, including a shutout at ten nothing shutout a couple of years ago. But the B-Diggers are going with a senior right-hander in B.J. Hirschfeld, so let's see if that level of experience in the mound is going to p- benefit Brush in this particular game. Also keep in mind that Resurrection Christian and Brush will be in the same league next year. So it's good to be playing them right now, as they did last year in Brush and the year before in Loveland. Grant McElmum, the head coach of Resurrection, Kevin Fergus of the B-Diggers in his second year. And the Cougars will take the field here on a gorgeous Monday afternoon. Temperature in the mid-70s. The wind is virtually non-existent. At first base will be Matt Schmidt. Jesse Cross at second. The third baseman is Bryn Hayden. In between them at short is Brendan Herfelt. It's Anthony Masio in left. The center fielder is Jake Tomchek. Over in right, Nathan Wiggins. Behind the plate is Luke Cross. And Luke Fick is on the mound for Resurrection Christian. And this will be it for the B-Diggers this week, other than the game against Valley on Friday. Chris Brom will have that call on Friday at 4 o'clock from Brush on 1010 and KSIR.com. Fick, a right-hander for Resurrection Christian. And it's amazing that uh, year after year can go by. And Resurrection not only produces outstanding baseball teams, as does Brush, but it seems every time Brush faces a pitcher for Res, it's always a hard-throwing right-hander. I don't see too many lefties out here other than their first baseman, Matt Schmidt. I don't even know if he takes the mound at all. The rest are all right-handers. So Matt Coe will be stepping in momentarily. Coe was the winning pitcher against Yuma on Saturday. What a job he did, striking out seven. And he came into the game in the fifth inning and allowed two unearned runs. All the runs scored by Yuma were unearned. Opening pitch today is brought to you by Buildings by Design, the experience to complete your project from start to finish. Get the quality you deserve in your building by starting your build project right. Start with buildings by design. 
as Resurrection Christian has attempted to even their record while the B-Diggers are trying to improve to 5-1 and one on the year, but certainly a huge challenge for them here in Loveland. This team is a very solid baseball team. That's why they schedule tough outside of conference play. So here is Matt Coe. Go batting from the left side. Cole Peterson and Baby here in the top of the first inning. Actually starting this game about three minutes tardy. And the third baseman is playing pretty deep here. You wonder if he might even think about laying down a bunt. Bryn Hayden away. Now he's on the edge of the grass, and the fastball is down and away. One ball and no strikes. Coe is 0 for 5 against Yuma. Wind and pitch. Swung on in line and caught by the shortstop, Brendan Herfeld. He was playing near the edge of the grass, and he robs Matt Cove a base hit, and there's one down. That's part of why Resurrection Christian is a solid team. They've got some excellent defensive players as well. The B-Diggers are going to have to match them. So one thing the B-Diggers did not do on Saturday was play defense. They committed four errors. Here's the wind by Fick and the pitch to Peterson. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Peterson was 0 for 4 in the game against Yuma. The offering, fastball, a strike down the middle to knees. Peterson at 4 out of 19 on the year, so a shade above 200. With an open stance from the right side and the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Fastball just above belt level. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes to the junior, Jaron Peterson. And the pitch down and away. Took something off, and it's two and two. Peony's got to have a heck of a team. To beat Resurrection Christian twice, even though the close games. And the offering. Breaking ball swung on and missed in the dirt. And the ball is up the first base side, fielded by the pitcher who underhands to Schmidt. Well, that's a rare strikeout with the ball getting away. And, and the pitcher in Fick actually underhanding the first. That's how wild the deflection was off the catcher, Lou Cross. And there's two down. And he was completely fooled by the breaking ball. Here's Matos Garcia. Baby, of course, had the big two-run blast. And the pitch. Fastball, a strike on the outer half just above the knees. It's 0-1. No balls in one strike. Baby was 1-3 for three in that game against the Indians. And the pitch. Breaking ball is up and away. Ball one strike, one two outs, nobody on top of the first inning in Loveland between the Beat Diggers and Resurrection Christian Cougars. One well, of the slightly open stance is Arnoldo Maltos Garcia. The pitch, breaking ball, is a strike down and away. And I mean down and away. It looked like it missed the zone. But it was a strike, one two, called a strike by the home plate umpire. And the offering. Fastball is down and away. Ball two, strike two. Hirschfeld is on deck, hoping to hit in this first inning. Fig gets the sign from Cross. And the two swung on and fisted the first. Schmidt has it play off his glove to his right. And then the flip the first by the second baseman gets away. Off the fence near the dugout. That'll be an error by Schmidt. 
And the inning is extended. It did take a tricky hop because it was cued out there. A little bit of a side spin, but, you know, with those, you got to get your body in front of them. Hirschfeld will now bat for Brush. B.J. looking to get on track here. As just a couple of hits in the early going this season. Short lead for Baby, about two and a half to three steps. The pitch, swinging a foul to the screen. Well, B.J. was nearly on top of that fastball, just got underneath it. No balls in one strike. To B.J. Hirschfeld. ACI proudly supports local high school sports throughout northeast Colorado. When you need ice, don't just settle for any old frozen water. Get AC ice at any local grocery or convenience store near you. Oh, one. Fastball is low and away. One ball and one strike to the B digger pitcher. Baby with a conservative lead at first. I don't think he's going anywhere with that lead. And a hard throwing right hander. And the offering. Breaking ball is in the dirt. Throw back the first baby back in diving. Two balls and one strike. With two down. Here at the top of the first inning. Cross lays down the sign. Short lead again for Matos Garcia. The stretch. And he takes off now, stepping off the mound. The throw to second, and Baby is going to be tagged. Safe! He got underneath the tag. Cross applied it, but Baby did get underneath it. That's a good call. Yeah, the ball beat him, but the foot beat the tag, and that's the key. So now runner in scoring position. The stretch by Fick. And Hirschfeld awaits the 2 one pitch, step off. Yeah, I know Baby didn't have that plan to take off while the pitcher was still in the stretch, but it ended up working out for him. Two balls and one strike once again. And the offering. Breaking ball is over for a strike at the knees. Two and two to Hirschfeld. Fick looks back towards Baby. A short lead at second now. The pitch. Fastball is up and away. It'll be a full count. And at the very least, the bead diggers are working the pitcher here. That's 17 pitches already. You want to get him at around 20 every inning. That's the way you work the pitcher. Hirschfeld's got him to a full count. Three balls, two strikes. And the offering swung on and fouled back. A late swing, but he stays alive. Yeah, at the very least, the bead diggers have accomplished something, even if they don't score in the first. I'm sure Fick wants to stay anywhere between 12 and 15 pitches. He's well over that now. And the 3-2. Swing and a miss. He threw him a changeup, pulling the string, and Hirschfeld strikes out. No runs, no hits, one air, and a man left in scoring position. Let's head to the bottom of the first inning. The beat diggers are held off the scoreboard, and Resurrection Christian is coming to bat. It's a one-minute break on 1010-KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's get to the Resurrection Christian starting lineup. As the beat diggers did not score in the top of the first, batting first is the shortstop, Brendan Herfeld. The center fielder, Jake Tomchek, hits second. Jesse Cross at second, hits third. The right fielder is the cleanup hitter, Nathan Wiggins. Batting fifth is the third baseman, Bryn Hayden. Anthony Masio, the left fielder, hits sixth. Luke Cross, the catcher, bats seventh. Batting eighth is the first baseman, Matt Schmidt. And Luke Fick, the pitcher, hits ninth. The bead diggers have Aaron Williams at first. Jaron Peterson at second. The third baseman is Trent Mount. <clears throat> at short is Baby Maltos Garcia. No read in left. The center fielder is Justin Griffith. And right, it is Ryan Fergus. Behind the plate is Matt Coe. And B.J. Hirschfeld 
is on the hill. Urfeld <clears throat> making his second start of the year for the bead diggers. <clears throat> Easily their most experienced pitcher. So let's see how the ace can do against this talented res lineup as Herfeld will step in. Right-handed hitter for Resurrection Christian. Herfeld toes the rubber. <clears throat> Here's the wine and pitch. Fastball is high. One ball and no strikes. Big Diggers also got to play that defense today to stay in this game. Took something off it for a strike off of Coe's glove. Down the middle at the knees. It's one and one. Coe sets up towards that middle again. One one. Breaking ball is up and in. Two balls and one strike. B. Diggers had a runner at second with two down, did not score. And the pitch way upstairs. Three and one. Hirschfeld gets the sign. Three one pitch. That is right there for a strike at the knees with a fastball. And the count moves to three and two. Coe's setting up towards the outside of the pitch. Swung on and popped foul and out of play. Behind the backstop. Count remains at three and two. Yeah, if you park directly behind the the field, you're lucky if they, you don't get a, a dent or a smashed window. And a three-two pitch. Outside with a fastball, and Herfeld walks. And that'll bring up Jake Tomchek. Tom Check, a left-handed hitter. B-diggers have to watch out defensively here. Tom Check with some speed could easily lay down a bunt and force the B-diggers to make a tough play. Herfeld with a two-and-a-half step lead, the stretch. And Herfeld delivers, squaring to bunt, lays it down up the first base side. That's going to be a tough play. Herfeld will throw the first for the out. Nice play by B.J. Herfeld to his left. The sacrifice will go. One to three for the opening out of the bottom of the first inning. But a well-executed bunt there. Very well executed by the left-handed hitter for the Resurrection Christian Cougars. Here's Jesse Cross. And that was Tom Check who laid that down. The stretch. The pitch. That's a strike. Belt high. On the outer half, it's 0-1. No score on the bottom of the first inning from Loveland. BJ looks back, and the 0-1, and the breaking ball is grounded to Mautos Garcia at short. He's going to throw to third. Mount will run towards second. He's still running towards second. He's going to tag him out. Excellent play by Trent Mount. I don't know what Herfeld was doing there. He had the play in front of him, and that was an excellent play by... Baby and Trent, the fielder's choice goes five or six to five. And there's two down. At first base is Jesse Cross. After that fielder's choice, here's Nathan Wiggins. Now you've got to hold up there if you're the base runner. And the pitch, the breaking ball is a strike. Wow. I tell you right now. It's a generous strike zone with a breaking ball so far. About a two and a half step lead for Cross. And the offering down and in with a fastball. One ball and one strike. Here in the bottom of the first inning, the B Diggers looking to keep Rez off the scoreboard. Short lead at first. And Hirschfeld delivers in the dirt, blocked by Coe. Ball two, strike one. Brush and Valley and Brush coming up on Friday at 4 o'clock with Chris Bullbrom right here on 1010 and KSIR.com. Two balls, one strike to the cleanup hitter, Nathan Wiggins. 
And the pitch. That is a strike. Took something off it. A beautiful off-speed pitch on the outer half at the knees. It is two and two to Wiggins. Now stretching out the lead is Cross at first. That's a good two and a half steps. The offering swung on and fouled off to the right. Count remains at two and two. Matt Coe gets the sign from the dugout. Sets up on the outside corner. Step off by BJ. All right, he toes the rubber once again. Open stance for Wiggins. Slightly open stance. Three-step lead. And the offering runner goes. Fastball is high. Coast throws a second. Montos Garcia applies the tag. And out is Nathan Wiggins. The caught stealing two to six. And that does it for Resurrection Christian in the bottom of the first. That was a bullet thrown by Matt Coe. And in that inning, there was a fielder's choice and a caught stealing. Excellent defense by the B-Diggers. No runs, no hits, no errors, and the bases were left empty. Let's head to the second. No score between Brush and Resurrection Christian in Loveland on 1010-KSIR and KSIR.com. 5, 6, and 7 for the B-Diggers. Aaron Williams, Trent Mountain, Ryan Fergus against the right-hander Luke Fick. No score here in the second. The pitch. Swung on and driven to right field. That's hit on the line, but that's going to be an easy play out there as the catch is made by Nathan Wiggins for the first out. Hit well, but right at Wiggins. That'll bring up Trent Mount. Mount this season hitting 333. Had three of those hits in the opening game against the Bobcats of Estes Park. The pitch up and in for a strike. Wow. That must have been just above a belt level. No balls and one strike to mount. And Fick delivers. Breaking balls in the dirt. One ball and one strike. And Fick likes to work pretty quickly here. Although he's still waiting for the sign from catcher cross. The pitch swung on and tapped up the third base side. And that's foul. It's off the the hitter's foot. One ball and two strikes. And Trent Mount awaits the pitch. Swung on and foul to the screen. Man, a nice cut there by Mount. Similar cut that uh, Hirschfeld had when he fouled off a pitch in his at-bat. All right, we'll see another 1-2 pitch from Luke Fick to Trent Mount. He kicks and fires. Swung on and fisted foul and out of play off to the right. It's a baseball, but when that ball descends sometimes in the crowd, it's like it's a it's something lethal that's dropping. And some people are just crazy. They just go for it. They stick their hand out. One and two once again. And Fick comes home. Breaking ball in the dirt once again. Two balls and two strikes. No score. <clears throat> On the top of the second inning from Loveland. And the B-Diggers mainly have all uh, league games after this. Liberty Common will close out the season. Swung on and tapped foul up the third base side. Well, it's a solid plate appearance here by Trent. This will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat. Live in your world and learn in ours at Northeastern. For more information about Northeastern or classes available to you, Go to njc.edu. The pitch in the dirt. He short-armed it. Yeah, that was the definition of aiming there by Fick. Three and two. The right-hander gets a sign from Cross. And he delivers. Swung on. That ball is hit high down the left side. 
towards the line into foul territory. And it remains at 3-2. and two. Masio gave it a chase there, but could not make the play. It was beyond his reach. So this will be pitch number 10 of this plate appearance. Let's see if Trent can win it. Three and two. And the offering swung on and fouled. Man, this is an excellent at bat. Six, seven, eight, yep. Ten pitches so far. Here comes the eleventh pitch of the plate appearance. <laughs> Three and two to mount. And the offering. And that is low on the changeup. And it's a walk to mount. And Ryan Fergus will now hit. Fergus had an RBI double against Yuma. And then the suicide squeeze in the bottom of the 10th that won the game, scoring Aaron Williams. So a junior is on first, and a junior is at the plate. The stretch. Pitch to Fergus. Fastball is up and away. <clears throat> One ball and no strikes. Yeah, Ryan can hit to all fields, and he showed that he can lay down a, a bunch when they need it the most on Saturday. Short lead at first, about a couple of steps for Mount 1-0 in the dirt, scooped out by Cross. Two balls and no strikes. There are some struggles in this inning for the right-hander Fick. Both teams had one base runner in the first inning. And both teams had a runner in scoring position. Fick stretches. 2-0. A strike with a fastball at the knees. Two balls and one strike. On deck is Noah Reed. Followed by Justin Griffith in the top of the second inning. Mount again out to a good lead. Throw back to first back in standing. Pretty decent move over there by Fick. And Ryan wants to time out this pitcher. He's taking his time before getting back into the box. And now he settles back in. Fergus awaits the offering. Runner goes. It's high. The throw to second is there. And the tag. And no, the ball's off the glove of the shortstop. Herfeld is a stolen base for Mount. And it's a 3-1 count. It was a little bit up the second base side, but had that throw been more accurate, I think they would have got Trent. But nonetheless, he steals the base. Three balls and one strike. Fick looks back. And Fick delivers. Swag and a miss at a fastball letter high. Three and two. Yeah, that would have been tough to hit solidly anyway. Fick with a 3-2. And here it is. Swing and a miss on a changeup or something off speed. He threw him. Fergus strikes out. There's two down. He definitely threw him something off speed. There's Noah Reed. Reed back in the lineup. He was <clears throat> idle on uh, Saturday. Playing left field today here for the B-Diggers. The stretch. And the pitch. Swung on and lifted foul and out of play down the right side. Reed hitting 125 through the four games that he's appeared in. No balls, one strike, one on, two down. Top of the second inning. Brush nothing. Resurrection Christian nothing. Fick stretches. Looking back. And the offering. Swing and a miss through the fastball right by him. Thigh high. It's 0-2.
0-2 on Reed. Got to shorten up that swing now. It took a longer swing when he fouled it off the first time. Now he's choking up a bit, wants to get ahead of the, any fastball that's thrown to him. 0-2, swung on and lifted into shallow right field. Wiggins comes in. He'll make the catch. And that does it for the beat diggers in the top of the second inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a man left. We head to the bottom of the second. No score between Brush and Resurrection Christian on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the bottom of the second inning in Loveland. The beat diggers and Cougars are scoreless. It'll be Nathan Wiggins, Bryn Hayden, and Anthony Mascio. Wiggins was the hitter when Coe eliminated the base runner and a caught stealing. So he's back in the box against B.J. Hirschfeld, the pitch. Swung on and lifted a left field. Noah Reed to his left settles under it, makes the one-handed grab for the out. One down in the second. And here is Bryn Hayden. Another right-handed hitter for Resurrection Christian. Hirschfeld comes home. And the breaking ball is a strike. Bell tied. It's 0-1. Laying down the sign is Coe. No balls and a strike. The pitch. Swung on line foul on that breaking ball down the third base side. It's 0-2. Well, now B.J. can throw a waste pitch or at least something close enough that maybe the hitter goes fishing. I think B.J. wanted that baseball. It felt good to him. Now he's going to throw it back in. Check to make sure that thing is not overly scuffed. No balls and two strikes to Hayden with the bases empty. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled straight back. Went with a fastball up in the zone. Count remains at 0-2. Hirschfeld works quickly. And the 0-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled straight back. Went with the off speed and he just got a piece of it. Yeah, this is state tournament type of competition on both sides. B.J. ready, and the 0-2 up and away. That was his waist pitch, one ball and two strikes. On deck is Anthony Mascio. The offering swung on and grounded up the middle. Shortstop Matos Garcia dives to his left behind the bag, flips the first, it'll be late. It's a base hit for Bryn Hayden. Baby laid out, but that was going to be too difficult to make the play. And Resurrection Christian is the first hit of the game by either side. And there's Mascio. And he's still outside the batter's box waiting for the signs here. Two step lead at first, and the step off there, the throw the first, and nothing doing. The B Diggers have stranded two. Resurrection Christian did not leave a runner on in the first inning. Hirschfeld comes home. Fastball is inside. One ball and no strikes. The B Diggers are at double play depth. They're up the middle with Peterson and Matos Garcia. The offering swung on. That ball is drilled to center field. Justin Griffith goes back, still going back, and it's over his head. Towards the fence, Griffith will throw it back in, and now the runner's going to have to go home. Matos Garcia throws to the plate, and Cole's going to apply the tag. And let me tell you, and he threw his shoulder into him. Boy, I don't know. Cole is on the ground. As the tag was applied, but Hayden threw that left shoulder into him and Co applied the tag. And the third is Masio, and there's two down. 
So we'll call it a double, but uh, Justin Griffith badly misjudged that ball. That'll go 8-6-2 to six to two for the out at the plate. And the third on the throw was cross. Yeah, the throw beat him by a mile. I mean, there was no reason for the base runner to level that shoulder in there. So Hayden eliminated at the plate. And now at the plate was crossed, but the B-Diggers got to be better defensively. That should have been caught easily, and Griffith did not read that baseball off the bat at all. He was standing there, and then it just sailed over his head. Wind and pitch. Oh, and it hit him in the back. That might have been a purpose pitch. Cross not happy about that. And now here's Matt Schmidt. And let me tell you, the umpire is going to have to get this game under control because one retaliation right there after the uh, after what happened on the play at the plate. Looks like the courtesy runners, Hernandez at first base. And now the head coach, this is very smart. you got to meet at home plate. He had a collision at the plate that was initiated by Bryn Hayden when Co applied the tag. And then on the next pitch, Luke Cross was hit in the back there by Hirschfeld. So now we could be looking at an ejection if anything like this happens the rest of the game, without a doubt. And that's why a smart job by the home plate umpire meeting with both coaches Grant McElman of Resurrection Christian and Kevin Fergus of Brush. Brenda Robin Ed, your farmer's agent, will work to provide unique, customized coverage at an affordable price at Farmers Insurance Agency, 522-1341. And accidents and illness strike at any time, day and night, and every second counts. As a Level 3 Trauma Center, Colorado Plains Medical Center is ready to handle any type of emergency. Colorado Plains Medical Center. So the situation is as follows. Runners at first and third, two down. I mean, you're kidding me. These guys didn't know how many outs there were? That's ridiculous. you got to be kidding me. I mean, come on. I mean, they get paid. I mean, you got to be better than that. I know there's no scoreboard out here, but you got to be better than that. I mean, two umpires did not know how many outs there were. So here we go. Stepping in is Matt Schmidt. And I realize there's some confusion out there, but they've got two of them, not one. So with runners at the corners, Masio at third and Hernandez at first. Hirschfeld setting up on the left side of the rubber, the stretch. And the offering. Check swing. Did he go? Apparently not. One ball and no strikes. This is the number eight hitter in the lineup. We do have no score with Resurrection Christian threatening. Hirschfeld stretches. The pitch in the dirt blocked by Coe. Looked like he tried to knuckle it to him. 2-0. and On deck is Luke Fick, but the bead diggers want him to hit in the third. Matt Coe lays down the sign. 2-0 pitch. Strike, a fastball on the outer half at the knees. Ball two, strike one. To the left-handed hitting first baseman, Matt Schmidt. Hirschfeld looks in, and the offering, swung on and driven to right field, coming in and making the catch is Ryan Fergus on the line drive. And Resurrection Christian does not score, and the B-Diggers survive some shaky defense in that bottom of the second inning. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left. Let's head to the third. Brush nothing. Resurrection Christian nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 
Nine one and two for the B Diggers. Justin Griffith, Matt Coe, and Jaron Peterson against right hander Luke Fick. As the Cougars and B Diggers have had runners on in each of their two frames, but have not scored. Both teams have stranded two. Good ball game so far. We've had some uh, brief fireworks in the bottom of the second inning. We've seen a very interesting strike zone on breaking balls as well, so I don't know. I don't know how to read it. Got to wait for the umpire's call on some of those breaking balls that are dipping down in the zone. So here's Justin Griffith. Griffith from the left side. 0 for 2 in Saturday's victory over Yuma. Wind and pitch. Fastball down the middle for a strike at the knees. No balls and one strike to the B-Digger center fielder. And the offering up and in. Took something off of the count as level at one and one. Griffith with four hits and 13 at bats. The pitch in the dirt. So he's a shade over 300. Very good for a number nine hitter. Two and one to Griffith with a slightly open stance from that left side. Luke Fick gets the sign and the pitch. That is a ball. Man, I heard a sound there. I thought it was going to call a strike on the pitch up and away. Three and one. So Justin in a hitter's count with a 3 1. Fastball right down the middle for a strike. Again, just above the knees. And it is three and two. That was pitch number 45 for Fick. It'll be a payoff to Griffith. The breaking ball called strike three. Excellent pitch, and there's one down. Yeah, that froze the center fielder. That was uh, that was one of those strikes that dropped in there perfectly. Right at the knee level. Here's Matt Coe. Coe lined to the shortstop, Herfeld, to lead off the game. The right-hander, Fick, delivers. Fastball is a strike, belt high. It's 0-1. Yeah, I don't think that was uh, Coe's pitch. And the offering. Swung on and grounded a first. Schmitz got it on three hops. Steps on the bag for the out. There's two down. Two down for Jaron Peterson. Peterson struck out his first time up on a breaking ball in the dirt. And Fick needed that. He needed a a quick at bat there because the B-Diggers have been working him in this game. Wind and offering. Fastball is down and away. One ball and no strikes to Jaron Peterson. And Fick fires. Strike. Fastball just above belt level. The leading agriculture lender in the area is Premier Farm Credit member owned and committed to sharing sharing the profits through their patronage program in Sterling, Fort Morgan, Human, Holyoke, Premier Farm Credit. 1-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off the end of the bat. Off to the right side. It's 1-2. and two. Throw him the off-speed and Jaron was out in front. Fick is looking for the 1-2-3 inning in the third. Peterson with an open stance. And the pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed, but the ball's going to skip all the way to the backstop, and Peterson's going to reach on the strikeout. Well, that's good and not so good for Brush because Peterson is on base, but he has struck out a lot of here early in the early going this season, including twice today on pitches that were nowhere near the strike zone. And here's Baby, who reached on an error in the first inning. So the inning's still alive, but good presence of mind by Jaron taking off, knowing that pitch was not caught on the fly. It didn't even get to the plate on a fly. 
Throw back to first. Peterson back in standing. And the ball is loose in the infield. Off the air and throw back from Schmidt to Fick and backed up by the third baseman, Bryn Hayden. No advance by Peterson. Jaron's got a nice lead out there. Three steps the pitch. Swung on and fouled. Strong swing by Baby. And he fouled it to the screen. It's 0-1. With two down in the third. No score in Loveland. Peterson stretches. Uh, Peterson uh, leads, I should say. Throw back to first and back in standing. Baby settles back in. The stretch. And the offering. Swung on. That ball is laced in deep into left field. Way back towards the fence. And it's caught up against the fence by Masio. Baby gave it a long ride. But he caught the long fly ball just up against the fence. And the bead diggers are denied in the third inning. Nearly a second home run in as many games. If that foot, if that uh, fence was one foot in or closer, then it would have been a two-run homer. No runs for the beat diggers in that inning. They struck. We head to the bottom of the third. No score between Brush and Resurrection Christian on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. No score between Brush and Resurrection Christian as we move to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be 9-1-2. and two. That was the order for the Bee Diggers when they came to bat in the third. Yeah, Baby gave that ball a long ride. There are no dimensions on this field, at least no listed dimensions. And it was caught up against the fence by Macio. So Fick will stand in. And I think the truth of the matter is that ball would have been gone in brush. But in Loveland, fence is a little bit deeper. It's only 300 down the line in brush. So here's Fick, the opposing pitcher. Wind and pitch. Fastball is high. Only the 31st pitch thrown by Hirschfeld. 1-0. Off the glove of Coe, down and away. Two balls and no strikes. He did walk the opening hitter at the bottom of the first inning and then escaped trouble. The bee diggers have taken advantage of Resurrection Christian being too aggressive, fouled back. We had a runner tagged out in a rundown, a runner caught stealing, a runner tagged out at the plate. So Resurrection Christian's base running is overly aggressive. The B-Diggers are too good defensively to allow those runs to score. The pitch, breaking ball is, must have been a little bit inside. Three and one. And the offering, fastball, a strike. Just above waist level, it's three and two. To Luke Fick. Hirschfeld ready. 3-2 pitch. Up and away. Walked him. One with a fastball again. And we should have a courtesy runner over there. Yep. wonder if that's Hernandez. I don't know. Numbers look like they've changed a bit here. No, that's Dominic uh, Maschio. Here's Herfeld. He walked. And then he was caught in that rundown in the first inning. The stretch by Herfeld. The pitch. Fastball, a strike on the outer half at the knees. No balls and one strike. We have not seen a 1 2 3 inning, and that won't happen here either. Squaring to bunt, and he missed it. That pitch was down in the zone. It's 0-2 as Mount came charging from third base. 
But now you don't expect a bunt here from Herfeld. Down no balls and two strikes. It's a risky proposition if he tries to lay one down because if you hit it foul, then you're out. Counts as a strikeout. Short lead at first for Machio. O2 pitch. Swung on and foul to the screen. That pitch at the letters. It stays at 0-2. Again, a short lead at first. No balls and two strikes. Hirschfeld at the belt. Step off. No throw. Good pitching duel here so far between Luke Fick of Resurrection Christian and B.J. Hirschfeld of Brush. And the offering upstairs of the fastball. Ball one, strike two. Nobody out in the bottom of the third inning. Now the sun has reappeared and disappeared for a while. That sun is right in the eyes of beat digger outfielders. The pitch. Breaking ball is grounded up the middle. Matos Garcia throws to second for one to first. Two, six, four, three. Baby to Jaron to Williams, and there's two down. Only two down, Aaron. Aaron dropped the uh, ball like the inning was over, but that was only the second hitter of the inning. Two down for Tom Check. Tom Check had the sacrifice bunt in the first inning, which advanced her felt at the time. Matt Koch gets the sign from the dugout. Here's the wind and pitch, and that's a strike with a breaking ball. It's 0 1, threw it at the knees. A nice off speed there by Hirschfeld. BJ turns and fires. Fastball, a strike on the inner half at the knees. It's 0 2. Tom Check in an 0 2 hole. Hirschfeld with the 0 2 offering. And check swing. It looked like he went. Oh, they got to they gotta check that with the. Wow. I mean, it's a fastball high, but. You can't check with the umpire who's up the first base side. That's got to be the home plate it's call. One and two. Very close. And the offering swung on and fouled on the off speed of the screen. Count remains at one and two. To Jake Tomchek. Two outs and the base is empty in the bottom of the third. Oh, setting up on the inside corner of the pitch. Swung on grounded foul up the third base side. Threw him a breaking ball. Took the inside outswing. And it stays at one ball and two strikes. Home of the 895 dinner menu. That's Atwood Steakhouse. That's during the week and the best prime rib and other great specials. Fastball in the dirt on Friday and Saturday. Atwood Steakhouse. Two balls and two strikes to the number two hitter in this lineup for the left side. Hirschfeld ready, looking to make this another scoreless inning. Time is called. Yeah, with Resurrection Christian being the visiting team, that placing some urgency on Brush to score at some point. And that is a ball he just missed on the breaking ball wow i have no idea i mean the beat diggers were running towards the dugout i that looked like a strike on the outside corner i have no idea where that missed i have no idea where that missed three and two wow i don't know it's confusing to me three two pitch that's definitely high and it's a walk but the previous pitch kind of set that up Batting will be Jesse Cross. Cross hit into that fielder's choice. Man. I do not know where that previous pitch missed two pitches ago. The stretch. 
And the offering. Swung on and driven towards left field. Noah Reed to his left is under it. Makes the catch. And that does it for Resurrection Christian in the bottom of the third as they strand one. Let's head to the fourth. Brush nothing. Resurrection Christian nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. I'm John Beltran back in Loveland. No score between Brush and Resurrection Christian as we head to the visiting half of the fourth inning. It'll be four, five, and six for Brush. B.J. Hirschfeld followed by Aaron Williams. And then Trent Mount. We do not have a single one, two, three inning, even though the beat diggers have made some nice plays to eliminate some Cougars on the base pass. The breaking ball is low. One ball and no strikes. Hirschfeld struck out looking his first time up. Swung on line for a base hit into center field. And the bee diggers pick up their first hit of the game. It took them a while to get their first hit against Yuma. Same story here, but in that game they were actually right there as they are right now, so it really doesn't matter. Here's Aaron Williams. Williams lined out his first time up to right. And Williams will step in. There's an issue here behind the digger dugout. Yeah, this is a pitcher's duel, but also has the makings of a two-hour-plus game. Luke Fick gets a sign. Short lead at first for Hirschfeld. The stretch and the offering. Fastballs in the dirt. One ball and no strikes to Williams, officially at 0 for 1. B.J. runs for himself. A lot of pitchers get a courtesy runner, not Hirschfeld. Awaiting the 1-0, the pitch right there for a strike. Another fastball just above knee level. And that evens the count at 1-1. One Resurrection Christian has a couple of hits. The Bee Diggers have won. The Cougars have committed the game's only error. Long pause again. 1-1 one, one pitch. Took something off it. That's a strike. On the outer half to Aaron Williams. Throw him a changeup. One ball and two strikes. Again, Hirsch fell with a very conservative lead over there. The pitch, fastball outside. It is two and two. And Mounts, who had a 12 pitch at bat, her plate appearance, which ended with a walk, is on deck. The stretch. 2 2 to Williams in the dirt and gets away from the catcher cross up the first base side. And Hirsch fell to second in the wild pitch. And the Bead Diggers have the first threat for them, really, since the first inning when Baby was at second base. Now Cross will have a conversation with his pitcher, Fick. And once again, the count is at three and two for Aaron Williams. Aaron back in. Yeah, even if you make it out here, just hit it on the right side. Something to advance the runner with less than two down to third. Fick comes home. Swung on. That ball is drilled into the left center field gap. That's headed towards the fence and cut off. Hirschfeld's around third. He will score. And Williams taking a wide turn. It's an RBI single by Aaron Williams. And the scoreless game is now a one nothing brush lead in the fourth. And that'll bring up Trent Mount. As I mentioned Mount walked.
in his first plate appearance. The stretch by Fick. The pitch. And the off-speed is outside. So the visitors have broken out on top here in the fourth inning. Looking to add to the lead. We know that one run is going to be tough to win the game with. They need more than that. The pitch nearly hit him with a fastball. Two balls and no strikes. And an excellent hitter's count now is Trent Mount. Williams with a two-step lead. Luke Fick comes home. Swung on, grounded off the pitcher's right foot to the right side. Picked up by the shortstop in the throw and in time. Herfeld made the play. That'll go one to six to three. And there is one down. Yeah, that's that's a good call there. He got him. He did get him by less than half a step. And here's Ryan Fergus. Fergus struck out swinging his first time up. So the B-Diggers got a bad break there. That could have been a base hit right off the pitcher, the stretch. And the offering. Swung on, grounded right side. Routine play as it, the play is made over there at second for the out by Jesse Cross. And there's two down. Williams advances to third. Noah Reed popped to right. And his first at bat. The stretch. And the offering. Fastball, a strike. Thigh high on the outer half, it's 0 and 1. Reed is looking to that right side. He tried that first time and he just elevated it a bit. The pitch, and he takes a fastball for a strike at the knees on the inner half. No balls and two strikes to the B Digger left fielder. Out of the stretch is Fick. The B Diggers have broken out on top, 1 0 here in the fourth. Williams with a two-step advantage. 0-2. Fastball is high. One ball and two strikes. Reed digs in. One and two. The offering. Breaking ball called strike three. Right at belt level. And the B-Diggers are done in the fourth inning, but they score a run on two hits. No airs and a man left. To the bottom of the fourth we go. Brush one. Resurrection Christian nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. The B-Diggers one and the Cougars nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Four, five, and six for Resurrection Christian. Nathan Wiggins will lead it off. As both B.J. Hirschfeld and Luke Fick are working on two hitters, but Hirschfeld is work, working on a two-hit shutout here in this fourth inning. Nathan Wiggins, his first time up, popped the left. Wine and pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball at the letters. It's 0-1. And the pitch. Fastball, a strike down the middle at the knees. It's 0-2. No balls and two strikes. And the offering down and away. One and two. One ball and two strikes. And the offering didn't go there on the fastball up and in. Two and two to Wiggins. Here to begin the bottom of the fourth inning. Brush one, resurrection, Christian nothing. Hirschfeld comes home. Oh, and he bounced it in there. Ugh. Ugly off-speed pitch. 
And BJ's got to get this first hitter. He's already walked the first hitter of the bottom of the first and third innings and survived that. This is a huge pitch coming up to Wiggins. He was ahead 0-2 in the count. Cole lays down the sign. And the pitch. Swung on and fisted to third. Mount charges, gloves, throws on the run, in time, and Wiggins is out number one. One out in the fourth for Bryn Hayden. Hayden singled to center, and then he was thrown out at the plate. On a double by Anthony Mascio. Wind and pitch. Breaking ball is a strike right there down the middle at the knees. It's 0-1. Hirschfeld gets a sign. The offering. Swung on and fouled off to the right on a half swing. No balls and two strikes. Excellent ball game. The B-Diggers have struggled here over the years. But today it's a tight affair. one nothing brush. And the offering swung on and foul to the backstop. One with a fastball. Remains at 0-2. And BJ has not struck out a hitter, so he's he's pitched to contact. That's good enough. If your defense plays behind you, nothing wrong with pitching to contact against this excellent lineup. 0-2 offering. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. There's his first strikeout. And there's two down in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that'll send up Anthony Mascio, who doubled on that play that resulted in the collision at the plate. Well, that might have been B.J.'s best pitch of the game on an 0-2. That was his 60th pitch here over three and two-thirds innings. The offering inside took something off, but it's 1-0. Code lays down the sign. With two down in the bases, empty the pitch. Down and in. 2 and 0. Oh. To Masio. Hirschfeld's going to have to come in with one here. This could be a hitter's pitch. Let's see what he throws him on the 2 0. Oh. Swing and a miss. He took a fastball swing at a breaking ball. This time that it's two and one. The pitch, and that's a strike. That had some bend to it. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two down. The offering swung on and fouled on the high fastball. As Masio stays alive. Back in the box at two balls and two strikes. Hirschfeld gets the sign. And delivers. Swung on and grounded down the third baseline. Mount has got it. Long throw to first. Is going to be offline and up against the fence. Would have been a tough play. We'll call it an infield hit. He was throwing on the run. Not an easy play. Scored an infield hit. He was throwing against his body, and the inning continues. Here's Luke Cross, who was hit by a pitch. That could have been scored either way, but we have no official score, so that's essentially up to me on a on a running throw. Cross was hit by a pitch his first time up the stretch. Hirschfeld comes home. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. It's 0-1. No balls and one strike. The bead diggers with a one nothing lead. The offering swung on and grounded a short. Matos Garcia charges. He'll throw to first on the run. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit. No errors. And a man left. Let's head to the fifth inning. Tremendous ball game in Loveland. The bead diggers won and the resurrection Christian Cougars nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Justin Griffith will lead off for the Bee Diggers as we head to the fifth inning against right-hander Luke Fick, who has thrown 70 pitches to be exact. 
And Fick has allowed two hits all in that fourth inning. He has struck out six in the game and walked one. One of those strikeouts came against Griffith on a 3-2 breaking ball in the third inning. Here's the wind and pitch. Swung on and chopped over the mound to the shortstop. Herfeld charging, setting, throwing, out. Griffith is out number one. One down in the fifth for Matt Coe. Coe lined to short and grounded to first. He's 0 for 2. Will run, run. I don't know if I said that right. I'll say it again. Will one run be enough for the bead diggers to win this game? So far, so good for Brush. And the offering. Bounced in that off-speed pitch. One ball and no strikes. That Aaron Williams double brought to you by MMI International. The single, I should say, scoring Hirschfeld. Buying a mixer feeder truck. Nothing compares to the MMI design craftsmanship and service. MMI International swung on line for a base hit down the right field line. Coe takes a wide turn at first. He's headed for second, and he's going to have a one-out double as he slides in head first. And Matt Coe picks up the third hit of the game for the Bead Diggers. Here's Jaron Peterson. Peterson struck out twice. One time he reached base on the wild pitch third strike. The stretch. Fick looks back. And the offering. Runs inside with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Peterson back in, awaiting the pitch. On the 1-0. And he takes a fastball away. Throw back to second, up the second base side. And Coe is back in standing. 2-0 to Jaron Peterson. The stretch by Fick. 2-0. Fastball a strike on the inner half. Two and one. Again, Fick takes his time with a runner at second and one out. Looks back, looks home. Two one pitch. Swing and a miss. That's a big swing by Peterson. He was late. Two and two. Peterson trying to adjust here. Two and two. The offering. Upstairs, three balls and two strikes to the junior. Well, even if you do fan in a particular at bat, doesn't mean it's a bad at bat. He's taking it to the limit here. Three balls and two strikes. Off of second is Coe. He delivered a one out double. Luke Fick stretches, and now Peterson steps out. That's a good move by Peterson. Wants to throw that pitcher off rhythm. Again, Cole leads from second. Three balls and two strikes to Peterson. Well, now Cross will run out there to have a conversation. And they'll settle in on the pitch he wants to throw. On the 3 2, with Brush leading 1 0 in the fifth inning. There we go. Fick is taking his time. Now he's ready. 3 2 pitch. Up and in. Threw him a breaking ball that didn't break. And Peterson walks. And I'm surprised by that pitch selection. They did not challenge Peterson each of the last two pitches. And now you're sending up a hitter in Matos Garcia who reached on an error 
and then nearly hit a two-run homer his last time up. It was caught up against the fence. First and second with one out. Fick delivers. Swing and foul tipped into the glove. No balls and one strike. I think Baby wanted to hit that one back to Brush. He took a huge swing at that one. Coe at second. Peterson at first. And a pitch. Swing and a miss on a ball up in the zone. Well, he was thinking that was the same pitch that was thrown to him Saturday. But that was a hanging curveball in the strike zone. This was a hanging curveball above the strike zone. And he got underneath it. It's 0-2. The pitch upstairs on the fastball and way outside. One ball and two strikes. Once again, the B-Diggers lead 1-0 in the fifth inning. With one out and two on, threatening against Luke Fick once again. Runners take their leads. And the offering up and in. Again with the off-speed Kobach and diving to second, even though there was no throw. Two and two. Cross lays down the side. The stretch. Long pause. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball that was above the letters. He strikes out. And there's two down. Yeah, he swung at ball three. That pitch was a little bit too high. Baby thought he'd get a hold of it and he just swung underneath it. Here's Hirschfeld who singled and scored one inning ago. He will now hit for Brush with one in scoring position and one behind him. Cohen Peterson on the base pass. The offering and the breaking ball drops in for a strike. It is 0-1 to Hirschfeld. The B-Diggers have three hits in the game all in the last two innings. 0-1. Hirschfeld awaits. Long pause. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, almost like a half swing. Wasn't sure about that one, it's 0-2. All of a sudden the bee diggers here with Baby and with Hirschfeld don't look completely comfortable at the plate. Baby swung at two pitches out of the zone and Hirschfeld swung at one that didn't look like he was sure about. Now he's got to make up for this here, 0-2. He's tough spot for BJ to be in here against this Pitcher was struck out seven in the game. No balls, two strikes, two on, two out, one nothing brush in the fifth. The stretch and the pitch. Fastball is up and away, took something off it. It is one and two. One and two to the senior. Stretch by Fick. Let's see what he throws in a 1-2 upstairs with some breaking pitch that really didn't have much action. It's 2-2. And And for Fick, that was pitch number 88. He's running out of pitches. He's only got 22 to go. 2-2 to Hirschfeld. Runners go. Swung on and fouled off to the right. So here comes the 90th pitch. With two balls, two strikes, two on and two down in the fifth inning. BJ settles back in with the open stance. The stretch by Fick. Looks back. And the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the right. Out of play. One with a fastball up in the zone again. Nice job of Hirschfeld staying alive. Off of second is Coe. Off of first is Peterson. It'll be another two. Two pitch and there's a step off by Fick. Well, the run really doesn't matter if you get the hitter. So, seems to be concerned. Coe's got a lot of speed, but that doesn't matter if you get the hitter. The offering. 
Whoa, he overthrew that one way up and away. That pitch, it looked like uh, Fick tried to throw it through the glove instead of to the glove. Three and two to Hirschfeld. The stretch by Fick and the pitch. That is a called strike three. On a pitch away, he was rung up. And Hirschfeld strikes out. That is strikeout number eight for Luke Fick. The beat diggers are held scoreless. One hit, no errors, and two men left. Let's go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Brush one. Resurrection Christian nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the bottom of the fifth inning. The B-Diggers lead the Resurrection Christian Cougars 1-0. Ryan Fergus is the new pitcher. Hirschfeld goes to second. Peterson to right. Rush had two on and one out, but back-to-back strikeouts ended the threat in the top of the fifth inning. Fergus started the opener against Estes Park and picked up the easy victory in the 33-1 game. Now he's going to be on perhaps for a three-inning save because B.J. Hirschfeld did his job. Hirschfeld struck out just one, but he did what he had to do. Hirschfeld, four innings, allowed three hits, walked three, struck out one and through 68 pitches. And it's a good part of the lineup here for Fergus to face. Eight, nine, and one. Matt Schmidt, Luke Fick, and Brendan Herfeld. And Fick, the Resurrection Christian pitcher, he's above 90 pitches, so he probably won't see the mound in the sixth. Schmidt lined out in his first plate appearance. Line to right. Batting from the left side. Excellent game we've had here in Loveland. And, well, now the home plate umpire had to talk to Ryan Fergus, a bank that is committed to their community and keeping banking simple. Morgan Federal Bank on the cutting edge of banking, 321 Ensign. See what options they have avail- available. That is Morgan Federal Bank. There's a difference. And looking to find insurance for your car, home, or even for you. Calling Meyer Phillips Insurance with locations in Brush and Fort Morgan. They can help you with their home, car, health, or life insurance questions. Or provide a quote, Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance. And... Now the conversation between umpire and pitchers, umpire and coach. Kevin Fergus getting an explanation as a pitch is yet to be thrown here in the bottom of the fifth. The B-Diggers holding a one to nothing lead. Yeah, this is going to be a long game for a, a one nothing game, that's for sure. At least it's been long to now. We played an hour and a half. Pitches up and away on a fastball by Fergus. One ball and no strikes. Wind and pitch. Swung on chop foul up the first base side. Count is level at one and one. Matt Coe gets the sign from the dugout. And the 1-1 pitch upstairs. 2-1. Resurrection had the leadoff man on in the first and the third innings. The pitch all the way to the screen. Three balls and one strike. And Hirsch fell through just 68 pitches. Before being lifted here in the fifth. The 3-1, swinging a foul to the screen. Three balls and two strikes. Fergus. 
Fergus rubbing up the baseball with a three ball, two strike count. And the offering. Low, he missed with the off speed. Down and in. And that's the third time in the game that a leadoff hitter has reached base via the walk by Resurrection Christian. And Luke Fick will be at the plate with a stick. And now let's see. If we have a lineup issue or a change. Now the Resurrection Christian coach, Mackelman, is conversed with the home plate umpire. I mean, Thick is scheduled to hit. He's inside the batter's box. And we will have a courtesy runner. And let's see who that courtesy runner is. Man, it's this game is moving slowly. Yeah, that might be Hernandez again. That's a 15 out there. One nothing brush the bottom of the fifth inning. The wind now picks up. About a two-step lead. The stretch by Fergus. Pitch to Fick. Fastball down the middle for a strike at the knees. It's 0-1. The B-Diggers have turned one double play in this game. Let's see if Fick might surprise Brush with a bunt. The offering, breaking ball down and in. One ball and one strike. Man, this is an eternity between pitches. Man, how, how many signs can you relay to the hitter? Runner goes, pitches high in the breaking ball. The throw to second is offline. Easy stolen base for Hernandez. And it's two and one. Two and one to Fick, and now let's see if maybe the bunt is in play. I mean, this is painful to watch. Just give him the signs already. Jeez. He steps out, and that's the problem with baseball. 2-1 squaring to bunt, and he takes a fastball low. 3-1. and one. Here's the step out. More signs. Let's just let put a clock on this. Yeah, this is fairly ridiculous. Three balls and one strike. The stretch. And the pitch to fix squaring to bunt, and it's in the dirt. And Fergus has begun the inning with two walks. There's Brendan Herfeld. Herfeld has walked and ground. Now you here if you're a resurrection Christian. I don't know how you don't bunt. So then you set it up for your two and three hitters. However, he might take a pitch because Ryan is not finding the plate right now. And this is the first time that back to back walks have been issued by either side. First and second, nobody out in the bottom of the fifth inning. The beat diggers hold a one nothing lead, but it's in danger, squaring to bunt, and he lays it down out in front of the plate. Fergus Fields drops it, then throws to first with a second baseman covering. He wanted to go to third. He records the out, but he definitely wanted to go to third and did not secure the baseball. So the sacrifice is successful. One to four, and two runners are in scoring position. That'll bring up Jake Tomchek. A sack bunt and a walk for him. The tying run is 90 feet away. And the go-ahead run is right behind him. Tom check in the box. Awaits the pitch. Fastball is a strike. On the outer half at the knees, it's 0-1. I mean, Fergus showed in the state tournament last year he's capable of striking out some premier hitters. He's going to have to do it here or get a pop-up in the infield. The offering squared to Bunt, suicide squeeze, lays it down, and Ferg is going to have to set and throw to first in time. Back runner coming to the plate, the slide, and he's in there. Two runs scored, the out is recorded, but Resurrection Christian leads 2-1. to one. 
Perfect play by the Cougars to manufacture two runs. And they have taken the lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Bee Diggers did not do anything wrong there. That was just extremely well executed by Resurrection Christian. That'll bring up Jesse Cross, 0 for 2, and they're going to appeal to third as if they didn't step on the bag, but there's no umpire over there. I'm sure they're going to call him safe. Well, first of all, who? Well, yeah, they're they're not going to win that appeal either way. They're not going to win that one. So the inning will continue. And the bee diggers find themselves in a one-run hole now. Fergus ready. The pitch. The breaking ball drops in for a strike. It's all on to Cross, who's officially 0 for 2. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that it would have been hard pressed to think that one run would have been enough to win this game. The offering. Swung on and driven towards right field. That ball's going to drop for a base hit off the end of the bat. Cross now one for three. Not hit hard, but hit in a perfect spot. That'll send up Nathan Wiggins. But The price is paid here for walking two hitters in a row. And Resurrection Christian did what they had to do. Pitch is a strike. No balls and one strike to Nathan Wiggins, who popped out and grounded out to third. The offering. Breaky ball went behind Wiggins, one and one. One ball, one strike. Two are in with a man at first. Fergus delivers. Breaking ball is grounded foul up the third base side. Ball one, strike two. And Resurrection Christian in this inning did not have a hit to score that run. Two walks and two bunts and a throw. And a one-two. Swung on, that ball is lifted on the right side. The first baseman, Aaron Williams, backs up, still backing up, makes the catch. And that will end the fifth inning for Resurrection Christian. But the Cougars have taken the lead. Two runs on one hit, no errors and a man left. The Bee Diggers trail Resurrection Christian 2-1 to one in the sixth inning on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. All right, let's get confirmation on this new pitcher here because I don't know if I've got a 1-5. I'll have to check the uh, max prep site here with the bee diggers trailing 2-1 to one going into the sixth inning. Let's see if Luke Fick was simply taken out because I don't even see him on the field. Yeah, I still might not have had the right guy, though. That's why I'm rechecking here. He did score the first of the two runs. Let's see if that's Hernandez or that's another one. Yep, okay. We had that right all along. Okay. Yep, so Andrew Hernandez is the pitcher. He did score one of the two runs on that bunt. Here's Aaron Williams. He had the RBI single, and then he lined out. Against the right-hander, Hernandez. Yeah, we do have a new first baseman, though. That's not Schmidt out there. That, The pitch down and away. Bryn Hayden is over there at first, and Luke Fick is at third. So, yeah, we did have changes on the corners. One ball and no strikes to Williams. Wind and pitch. The breaking ball bounces in. It's 2-0. and oh.
2-0 to Williams. Hernandez gets the sign and delivers. Inside, 3-0. Luke Fick is the pitcher of record. You can close the book on him. Five innings through 92 pitches. Allowed a run on three hits. Struck out eight. Fastball down the middle for a strike and walk two. Three balls and one strike to Aaron Williams to lead off the sixth inning. Resurrection Christian with a 2-1 to one lead on their home field here in Loveland. The wine and offering. Swung on and chopped over the mound to second. Cross has got it. Sidearms to first for the... And the ball is dropped and then picked up by the first baseman. Hayden for the out. Wow. How did he drop a ball? That thrown right there, but... Williams ran it out, but uh, could not get the first before it was picked up by the first baseman. And there's one down. I mean, there was nothing odd about the throw. It hit him right in the glove, and he just couldn't hold it. But it dropped right at his feet, and he just picked it up and had his foot in the bag. And Trent Mount will now bat. Mount walked and grounded to second. He's 0 for 1. Hernandez ready. And the pitch. The bender bounces in. Well, the good news for Brush, they will get back to Matt Coe. They'll get to the top of the order at the very least. And he's got a big double in this game. 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. He took a big swing at that pitch. Count is level at 1-1. One one. Hernandez ready. He gets a sign from Cross. And a pitch. Breaking ball is up and in. Ball two, strike one. On deck is Ryan Fergus, who's the pitcher of record now for the Bee Diggers. And the offering. That's a beautiful breaking ball for a strike. On the outer half at the knees, it's two and two. Two balls and two strikes. One out on the bases, empty in the sixth inning. Now with that open stance. And the pitch. Down and away with a fastball. Got a good portion of the plate. Three and two. Let's see if Mount can draw a walk. Three, two offering. Swung on, grounded a third. Oh, stab by Fick to his left. The throw to first is high, but in time. Man, Fick didn't exactly get in front of that ball, but he made the play. For the second out of the inning. And Fergus, who struck out and grounded out, will now hit. He's 0 for 2. Well, the B Diggers holding a 1 0 lead for a short while. And then Resurrection Christian coming back on that bunt by Tomchek. There were runners at second and third. Then the trail runner scored on the throw to first from Fergus to Williams, which recorded the out. The pitch right there for a strike. That sidewinding bender is an 0 and 1 pitch now to Ryan Fergus. Brush has three hits in the game and Resurrection Christian with four. And the offering. Swing and a miss. Again, the off speed. It's 0 and 2. The Bee Diggers have stranded six on the base pads, and Resurrection Christian has left five. No balls and two strikes. Wine and pitch. Swung on and grounded slowly to short. Herfeld has it. Throws to first, and it's a 1-2-3 inning. And Ryan Fergus is out number three. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning. It is Resurrection Christian two, and the Bee Diggers one. On 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Cougars are looking for insurance here at the bottom of the sixth inning. The Beat Diggers want to keep this at a 2-1 to one game. Ryan Fergus will face Bryn Hayden, Anthony Massio, and Luke Cross, the five, six, and seven hitters. And 
as we begin the bottom of the sixth inning in Loveland. Excellent baseball game so far. It could be even better if the Bee Diggers can rally. Wind and pitch. Swung on. That ball is lifted extremely high towards the shortstop. Maltos Garcia to his left, and he settles under it for the out. One down in the sixth. Here's Mascio, who he's been the best hitter so far for Resurrection Christian. He's got two of the four hits. A double and a single. Line by Fergus, the pitch. The breaking ball drops in for a strike. At the knees, it's 0-1. Either way, these two teams are going to contend in the postseason, no doubt about it. When you have this type of pitching, the B-Diggers have demonstrated that all season, even though it's only their sixth game in Resurrection Christian traditionally is very good the offering square to bunt takes it for a ball one ball and one strike yeah these teams just keep pitching like this they'll be playing deep into the month of may as the diggers and the cougars did one year ago in separate classifications one one swung on that ball is lifted towards center field justin griffith to his left Makes the grab, and there's two down in the sixth. Here comes Luke Cross. Hit by a pitch and grounded a short. He is 0 for 1 in the game. Ryan Fergus comes home. Breaking ball's a strike. Gorgeous pitch there. It's 0 and 1. Yeah, he's in a groove now, no doubt. The pitch, be a little bit inside, same pitch, slightly different location. One ball, one strike, the base is empty, two down to the bottom of the sixth inning. Resurrection Christian leads two to one, and the offering swung on and lifted towards left center field. Griffith is back, now he comes in, he's under it, he makes the catch, and it's a one, two, three inning for Ryan Fergus. We head to the seventh. Can the Beat Diggers rally? We'll find out in one minute. It's Resurrection Christian 2, Brush 1 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 2 to 1, Resurrection Christian as we head to the seventh. And Resurrection Christian has a new pitcher. That'll be Bryn Hayden. That's his third position in the game. <clears throat> so Schmidt moves back to first. And he will face, let's see, we've got a new hitter for the Bee Diggers, and that'll be Ryan Dunker. His first a plate appearance of the a plate appearance of the season to begin the seventh. <clears throat> Against the right hander. Eight, nine, and one, followed by Justin Griffith and Matt Coe. Another hard throwing right hander is Hayden. Coming on for the save. Now, let's see, I believe Fick is the pitcher of record here. <clears throat> yeah, because he went five innings and they scored their runs in the bottom of the fifth. <clears throat> and as I said, either either way, win or lose, an excellent ball game here. B Diggers have been solid defensively. They made that there's only been one strikeout recorded by a brush pitcher. That was Hirschfeld in the fourth inning. <clears throat> so here we go with Ryan Dunker's first plate appearance of the season. Here in the top half of the seventh inning. And this is by far the best varsity game the Bean Diggers have played since I started calling brush baseball. 17 years ago fastball is outside one ball and no strikes out of the stretch is Hayden with the bases empty cross lays down the sign and the 1-0 fastball a strike at the knees right down the middle it's one and one 
Hayden stretches one ball, one strike. The offering, swing and a miss. He threw the fastball right by the beat digger. It's one and two. Dunker's got to really shorten up that swing. That thing was a blazing fastball that Hayden delivered. The stretch. And the offering, swing and a miss. Threw it right by him down the middle, waist high, and there's one down. He was overmatched, but, you know, that's a tough position to put him in. First at bat of the year. Came here in the seventh inning of a 2-1 to one deficit. Here's Justin Griffith. He struck out and grounded to short. Stretched by Hayden, and the offering. Low and in with a fastball, one ball, no strikes. The stretch, Hayden gets the sign here from Cross. And the 1-0 pitch, swung on and lifted down the left field side, and that is twisting foul, and it is just foul. Count level to 1-1, and good idea by Griffiths going the other way. He's got tons of speed. He can put that ball on the ground. Solid approach here by the center fielder. One ball, one strike with one out in the seven. Two to one, Resurrection Christian. And the right-hander comes home. Swung on and lifted foul. Now to play off to the left on that half swing. Throw him the all-speed pitch. It's one and two with Matt Coe, another lefty, another sophomore on deck. One ball and two strikes. Griffith's got to protect that plate. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the left. Threw him a fastball tailing in. And Justin took a good hard swing at it late in that one, but still. Just wants to stay alive and work the count against Hayden. One and two once again to Griffith. The pitch low with a change up. It's two and two. Good take. We have seven combined hits in the game. Four by the Cougars, three by the Bee Diggers. 2-2 pitch, swung on and fouled off to the left. Man, he is fisting off fastballs and all-speed pitches tailing in. Everything is busting Griffith inside here. Count remains at 2-2. Two and two. Matt Coe again waits to hit next. He wants to be up there with Griffith on base because you would have speed on the bases and speed at the plate. We'll see another 2-2 pitch to Griffith. Here it is, and he bounces it in. Three and two. Well, this is a big pitch for both sides. A huge pitch for both sides. Could change the momentum of the game altogether. Three and two from right-hander Bryn Hayden. The left-handed hitting Justin Griffith. Luke Cross lays down the sign, the stretch, and the pitch called strike three, a fastball in the inside corner, and there's two down. I think Justin thought that pitch was going to be just a little bit off the plate. I mean, that just barely, barely grazed the corner, and there's Matt Coe, who's lined out, grounded out, and doubled. Oh, man, that was perfectly spotted there by Hayden. The pitch. In the dirt. On the breaking ball, it's 1-0. and Boy, tough plate appearance. A good one there by Griffith. It just didn't pay off in terms of the result. The stretch. 1-0 to Coe. Fastball is down and in. 2-0. and If Matt can hit it in the gap, man, he can run. The stretch with the bases empty and the 2-0. That's a fastball down and in. It's 3-0. And Peterson's on deck. Peterson worked a walk his last time up. 3-0. Let's see if Coe is taking. Swung off. Foul up the first base side. Had a fastball down the middle at the knees. And he knows he has to get on base, but it's a good pitch. This kid is strong. Could hit it a long way. Three and one. With two down and the bases empty in the seventh. 
the offering. Swung on and lifted foul and out of play. That fast down in the zone. He might have swung at ball four, but didn't want to take a chance. Well, had a pitch to work with, but figured he could hit that one in play. It's three and two to Coe. Cross lays down the sign. And the offering swung on and fouled off to the left and out of play. We'll do another 3-2. This game was scoreless until the fourth when the Beat Diggers tallied a run. Then Resurrection Christian scored two in the fifth without the benefit of a hit. A couple of walks and two bunts. Three and two to go. Hayden gets the sign, and the pitch up and away with a fastball, and Cole walks just past the top of the hour. This game is nearly two hours old. This is 10-10, KSIR, Brush, Fort Morgan, Greeley, and we're on the World Wide Web at KSIR.com. Jaron Peterson has struck out twice, reached one of those times when it was a wild pitch, third strike, and then he walked. And the one thing that Jared has got to do is shorten that swing. He's already struck out, I believe, eight times this year. The stretch and the pitch. Swung on and driven into left field for a base hit. That line drive is going to send Matt Coe to second. And Peterson keeps it going for the beat diggers. And that'll send up baby Maltos Garcia. Boy, what a gorgeous swing that was by J.P. And the Beat Diggers now have four hits in a game. Baby has reached on an air, popped out, and struck out. He is 0 for 3. A base hit can tie the game or give the Beat Diggers the lead. They trail 2-1 to one here in the seventh inning in Loveland. Bryn Hayden trying to work out of trouble here in the seventh. The stretch by the right-hander. And the pitch. And that off-speed pitch is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Keep in mind that Brush has rallied to win their last two games. They beat Strasburg 8-4, to four, trailing 3 nothing at one point, and beat Yuma 5-4-10. to four and 10. They were down 2 to nothing for a while in that game without a hit going into the middle innings. Time is called. There were two out and nobody on. Then Coe walked and Peterson singled. And now we'll have a visit to the hill. Once again, one ball and no strikes once that breaks up. When you're looking for someone to walk you through the insurance world, turn to the office of Greg Mullen and Brush. Home, auto, life, and health. State Farm Insurance is there for you and your family. Give Greg Mullen a call. 842-4555. One ball, no strikes. Conversation is broken up. Maltos can see in the box, moving those feet and getting those feet settled in. The stretch by Hayden. And the pitch. It bounces in, and it gets away to the backstop. Runners advance to second and third. 2-0. and oh. Now keep in mind... I'll tell you right now that between the plate and the backstop, it's only about, geez, I'd say about 20, 25 feet. And now they're going to walk Baby intentionally. They're going to walk him intentionally to set up a bases loaded situation for B.J. Hirschfeld, who has struck out looking twice, but he's also singled. B.J. is one for three. The bases are loaded. Nowhere to put him. Two to one brush trails in the top of the seventh inning. Hayden gets a sign. And the pitch. A strike with a fastball at the knees. It's 0 and 1. At third is Coe. Peterson at second. Maltos Garcia is at first. No balls and one strike. Long pause there by Hayden. Let's see if B.J. calls time. No, he's going to stand there. And the pitch up and in. And the count is level at one and one. Nervous moments here in Loveland on both sides. 
If Hirschfeld succeeds, we would at least have a tie game. One ball and one strike. And the pitch low with a fastball. It's two and one. Two and one to Hirschfeld. A big pitch here for Hayden. He's down in the count. Two and one to Hirschfeld. And the offering. And the ball hit him. It hit him in the back. Right around the back of the left shoulder. Coe sprints to the plate and scores the tying run. Holy Mahungas were tied at two on a hit by pitch with the bases loaded. How about that? Here's Aaron Williams. Williams is lined out, singled, and grounded out. So we're tied at two. The Beat Diggers are looking for the lead. They had it briefly. The stretch by Hayden. And the offering. Fastball, a strike on the outer half at the knees. It's 0-1. There are no lights here in Loveland. So if this game goes extras and it keeps going, it could be called due to darkness. But the Beat Diggers want to take the lead right now. The pitch. Swung on and chopped foul to the backstop. It's 0-2. No balls and two strikes. Peterson at third. Baby at second. Hirschfeld at first. We are tied at two in the seventh. What a game. Aaron's in a now. See if he can be a solid two-strike hitter. Hayden at the belt. 0-2. Breaking balls up and away. One ball and two strikes. Runners take their leads. The stretch. And the pitch. Swung on and chopped foul. That's off the hitter's foot. Remains at one and two. Yep, I haven't seen too many games tied on an RBI hit by pitch. But that's what happened here. We'll do it again. A 1-2 pitch coming to Williams. Here it is. In the dirt, scooped out, throw back to first. That's not a, a very wise play there. If he threw it away, that could have scored a run. It is 2-2. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The bases full of bead diggers. Pitch to Williams. Swung on line for a base hit into center field. Scoring is Peterson. Around third is Baby. And Baby is in. It's a two-run single. The ball is loose and now caught in a run down as Hirsch fell between third and second. And he's tagged out. But the bead diggers have grabbed a four-to-two lead as he was tagged out by Herfeld. It's a two-run single for Aaron Williams as the Bee Diggers tally three in the top of the seventh inning. Let's head to the bottom of the seventh. Brush four, Resurrection Christian two on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's begin the bottom of the seventh inning. The pitch, fastball, a strike on the outer half at the knees. Ryan Fergus here delivering at the bottom of the seventh inning to Matt Schmidt. Schmidt is lined out and walked. He is 0 for 1. The B Diggers rallied with three runs in the seventh with two down. The pitch. Fastball is up and they had nobody on base. Matt Cole walked. Jaron Peterson singled. Baby was walked intentionally. Hirschfeld was hit by a pitch. And then Williams with a two run single scoring. Cole and Peterson. Or check that. Uh, up and away with a breaking ball, 2 and 1. Well, Cole scored on the hit by pitch. Peterson and Baby scored on the single. Two and one to Schmidt. And the pitch. Swung on, grounded up the middle. The shortstop, Matos Garcia, has got it. Sets, throws to first, and on the bag is Williams. It was up the right field side, but there's one down. One down here. This could be a huge win if we're talking about playoff seating later on. And now there's going to be a conversation, apparently, between 
Grant McElman and the first base umpire look like Williams held the bag, but it's tough to tell from here. And it's even tough to tell from the third base position over there where he's running from. Luke Fick will now bat. And Fick has walked twice. As the B-Diggers have come back from a 2-1 to one deficit to grab the lead. Now yeah, what a game. I mean, this will be three times in a row that Brush rallies to win if they get the final two outs. Man, I mean, this is a sign of some big-time character by these beat diggers. Wind and pitch. Strike right there on the outer half of the fastball. It's 0-1. If Brush has ever won on this field, I don't know when that happened because it's not in this century, I can tell you that. The offering. Breaking ball swung on foul towards the digger dugout on the third base side. It is 0-2 to Luke Fick. No balls and two strikes. Here's the wine and the offering. Fastball is upstairs. One and two. Resurrection Christian was one out away with the bases empty and the beat diggers rallied. The offering upstairs with a breaking ball. That's two balls, two strikes. One out and the bases empty in the bottom of the seventh inning with the beat diggers holding a two-run advantage. Ryan Fergus kicks and fires. Swung on and popped foul and out of play behind the backstop. And the Bee Diggers will have to avenge their only loss of the season on Friday at home against Valley. Chris Brom will have that at 4 o'clock on 1010 and KSIR.com. But Brush is going for its fifth win of the year and again third in a row from behind as Matt Coe Makes an adjustment to his catcher's mask. When you're shopping for new appliances, shop the best appliance store in Fort Morgan. BNB Appliance with a full and complete line of Whirlpool appliances. They'll help you find your perfect fit. BNB Appliance, downtown Fort Morgan. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss on so the ball in the dirt. You had better throw him out. That was bounced in there, and Co does throw him out. Yeah, that was definitely bounced in there on the breaking ball, and there's two down. Co turned around, but you can't take that chance. you got to throw through, and a smart job by the B-Digger catcher. And Brendan Herfeld has walked, grounded out, and then a sacrifice bunt, which set up runners at second and third, so he's officially at 0 for 2 in the game. The pitch, the breaking ball is down and oh, one ball and no strikes to the Resurrection Christian shortstop. Fergus ready, and the offering, ooh, up and in, not even close, threw him the same pitch and got a different location, same result, 2-0. and oh. Yeah, the tying run is on deck. Two balls and no strikes. Fergus ready the pitch. Not even close. It's way outside with a fastball. 3 0. Jake Tomchak waits to hit next. That last out against a quality team is tough to get. Fastball, a strike. On the inner half at the knees, it's 3 1. Three balls and one strike. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Two down, the base is empty. Brush leads. 4-2 over Resurrection Christian. The offering low and off the glove of Coe to the screen. It's a walk. And that is the second walk issued to Brendan Herfeld. And now the tying run is at the plate. Jake Tomchek with a sag bunt, a walk, and then that suicide squeeze, which actually plated two runs. Can't worry too much about the runner now. Got to get these hitters. Or this hitter, the pit throw to first, though. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the run that means everything is the one at the plate. Fergie has walked three in the game, the stretch and the pitch. Swung on and chopped foul up the first base side. It is 0-1. 
Now two strikes away are the Bee Diggers from pulling off their third straight comeback. And the first of these comebacks on the road. The first two are at home. Fergus looks back at the runner, the stretch. Pitch to Tomchek. Breaking ball is a little bit up and away. Count levels at one and one. Ryan toes the rubber. Her fell off a of first. The stretch by Fergus and the pitch. Fastball is outside. Two and one. Boy, you don't want Jesse Cross to come up. You don't want him up there. He would be the go-ahead run. He'd be the winning run. Two and one to Tom Check. Seems to be Lucy Goosey up there. The stretch by Fergus. The pitch. Low with a fastball. It was below the knees. It's three and one. Three balls and one strike. Let's see if Fergus throws a strike here, and he does not. It's up and in. It's another walk. That's the fourth walk issued in less than three innings by Fergus. Here's Jesse Cross. We'll have a visit to the mound here by the shortstop Matos Garcia and Arturo Matos Garcia as well. Now Jesse Cross hit her to a fielder's choice. He lined the left that he singled. So he's had he's had some quality at bats in this game. And Resurrection Christian is looking to do what Brush did, which is rally from a deficit with nobody on base and two down. The B Digger rally started with a walk. This rally has started with two walks. Righty against righty. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The stretch by Fergus. And the pitch. The breaking ball bounces in and bounces up the first base side. And the runners will advance. That's the same thing that happened with the beat diggers in the top half of the inning. Now it's 1-0. And a base hit can tie the game. And now they're going to... They're going to walk cross intentionally. Well, now the winning run is at first base. Here is Nathan Wiggins. Wiggins is 0 for 3. He's popped out twice and grounded out. The stretch and the pitch and the breaking ball drops in for a strike. That's a big first pitch strike. Fergus has been lacking that here over the last three hitters. 0-1 0-1 with the bases loaded. Fergus at the chest. 0-1 pitch. Swung on and fisted on the ground towards the end of the bat. Williams has got it. He steps on the bag. And the Brush B diggers have won the game. As the Resurrection Christian Cougars strand the bases loaded. Brush 4. Resurrection Christian 2. It's a two-minute break on 10-10 KSIR. And KSIR.com. The Bee Digger Post Game Show is brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center with three locations to serve you better in Sterling Brush and Fort Morgan. Your headquarters for your home farm and ranch supplies from plumbing to feed. Mr. D's Ace Home Center. The Brush Bee Diggers have done it for a third consecutive game. They rally to win. They do it against one of the better teams in 2A. Resurrection Christian, 4-2. Four, four runs on five hits, no errors. Seven left on base for Brush. Two runs, four hits, one error. And eight left on base for Resurrection Christian. The winning pitcher in relief was Ryan Fergus. And the loss went to Bryn Hayden. Time of the game, two hours and 17 minutes as the B-Diggers took a one nothing lead in the fourth inning on Aaron Williams, a single scoring B.J. Hirschfeld. But then Fergus took over on the mound in the fifth inning, ran into trouble, walking the first two hitters, and then back-to-back bunt scored two runs. Jake Tomchek's bunch scored a run on the suicide squeeze. Then the trail runner would score when Fergus threw the first base to retire Tomchek. It stayed that way until the seventh. Two out, nobody on. Matt Coe works a 3-2 walk. Jaron Peterson singles. Baby Maltos Garcia was intentionally walked. And then on a 2-1 pitch, B.J. Hirschfeld was hit. 
and that tied the game at two as Coe scored. And then Aaron Williams delivered a two-run single, scoring Peterson and Maltos Garcia as the B diggers improved to five and one. Resurrection Christian fell to one and three. Hard luck losers. That's the third consecutive game that Resurrection Christian has lost a tough one, three to two, and eleven to ten to Paonia. Now four to two to the B diggers. And then, of course, in the bottom of the seventh inning, Fergus retired the first two and then ran into a mess. Two walks, an intentional walk, but then induced the ground out to first as Brush won the game. B-Digger player of the game is brought to you by Cargo Beef, committed to feeding the world in a responsible way by reducing environmental impact and improving products and processes. Learn about Cargill's story of commitment at Cargill.com. It's an easy call. Player of the game is Aaron Williams. Drove in the two runs with a base hit, also had another RBI, And he's been an RBI machine this year. I believe that's 13 ribbies for the senior first baseman, Aaron Williams. Outstanding job by our sound engineer and producer, Julie Garcia. Chris Brom will be with you on Friday when the Beat Diggers take on the Valley Vikings and Brush. First pitch at 4 o'clock right here on 1010 as well as KSIR.com. I'm John Beltran. The final score from Loveland, Brush 4. Resurrection Christian 2 as the Beat Diggers rally with three runs with two down and nobody on in the seventh. Right here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com.